Good morning, Will. Good morning and welcome to morning prayer with the Church of the Atonement here in Chicago. My name is Will Harpus. I'll be the officiant this morning for morning prayer. Today is Saturday in the fourth week after Pentecost. Um, for those of you that are following in the prayer book, which I have at my hand right here, um, I will give you the pages. I will also be following morning prayer with the BSG app, um, and you can go there uh, at um, dailyoffice.app. But for those of us using a prayer book, let me give you those pages. Morning prayer, right two, does begin on page 80 of the prayer book. Today's Psalms, we have five of them. It is the first day of the month, so it is Psalm 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 beginning on page 585, page 585 of the prayer book. The canticles 12 and 19, page 88 and 94 respectively. Um, we will uh, recite the Apostles' Creed found on page 96, the Our Father on page 97, and conclude with the general thanksgiving on page 101. We have a contemporary to some of us um, that the church is commemorating today. Her name is Polly Murray. And I'm going to read the hagiography because of its interest, uh, her recent uh, addition to this, this, uh, this part. So Polly Murray, priest, 1985. Polly Murray was an early and committed civil rights activist and the first African-American woman ordained as a priest in the Episcopal Church. Born in Baltimore in 1910, Murray was raised in Durham, North Carolina and graduated from Hunter College in 1933. After seeking admission to <clears throat> graduate school at the University of North Carolina in 1938. She was denied entry due to her race. She went on to graduate from Howard University Law School in 1944. While a student at Howard, she participated in sit-in demonstrations that challenged racial, racial segregation in drugstores and cafeterias in Washington, D.C. Let me repeat, that was in 1944. Denied admission to Harvard University for an advanced law degree because of her gender, Murray received her Master's of Law from the University of California, Berkeley in 1945. In 1948, the Women's Division of Christian Service of the Methodist Church hired Murray to compile information about segregation laws in the South. Her research led to a 1951 book, States Laws on Race and Color, which became a foundational document for Thurgood Marshall in his work on the decisive Supreme Court decision, Brown versus Board of Education, 1954. Committed to dismantling barriers of race, Murray saw the civil rights and women's movements as intertwined and believed that black women had a vested interest in the women's movement. In recent years, scholars have brought to light Murray's complex sexual and gender identity, including her attempts to access testosterone therapy as early as the 1930s. In later life, she discerned a call to ordain ministry and began studies at General Theological Seminary in 1973. She was ordained as a deacon, June 1976, and on January 8, 1977, she was ordained a priest at Washington National Cathedral. Murray served at Church of the Atonement in Washington, D.C from 1979 to 1981, and at Holy Nativity Church in Baltimore 
until her death in 1985. Murray's books include the family memoir, Proud Shoes, Story of an American Family, 1956, and the personal memoir, Song in a Weary Throat, An American Pilgrimage, 1987. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him. We'll have a moment of silence before we begin our prayers this morning. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 1, found on page 585 of the prayer. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is doomed. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together? Against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision, that he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Lord, how many adversaries I have, how many there are who rise up against me, how many there are who say of me, there is no help for him and his God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, 
and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayers. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace at once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my King and my God. For I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning I make my appeal and watch for you, for you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, and evil cannot dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful, O Lord, you abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will, bow, I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of those who lie in wait for me. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But all who take refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You will defend them without, you will defend them with your favor as with a shield. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First reading today is from the ninth chapter of the first book of Samuel. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow about this time I will send to you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be ruler over my people Israel. You shall save my people, he shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have seen the suffering of my people, because their outcry has come to me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall rule over my people. Then Saul approached Samuel inside the gate and said, Tell me, please, where is the house of the seer? Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. 
go up before me to the shrine. For today you shall eat with me, and in the morning I will let you go, and will tell you all that is on your mind. As for your donkeys that you that were lost three days ago, give no further thought to them, for they have been found. And on whom, and on whom is all Israel's desire fixed, if not on you, and on all your ancestors' house? Saul answered, I am only a Benjamite. From the least of the tribes of Israel. And my family is the humblest of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Why then have you spoken to me in this way? Then Samuel took Saul and his servant boy and brought them into the hall, he gave them a place at the head of those who had been invited, of whom there were about 30. And Samuel said to the cook, Bring the portion I gave you the one I ask you to put aside. The cook took up the thigh and what went with it and set them before Saul. Samuel said, See, what was kept is set before you. Eat, for it is set before you at the appointed time so that you might eat with the guests. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. When they came down from the shrine into the town, a bed was spread for Saul on the roof, and he lay down to sleep. Then at the break of dawn, Samuel called to Saul upon the roof, Get up, so that I may send you on your way. Saul got up, and both he and Samuel went out into the street. And they were going down to the outskirts of the town. Samuel said to Saul, Tell the boy to go on before us, and when he has passed on, Stop here yourself for a while, that I may make known to you the word of God. Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him. He said, The Lord has anointed you ruler over his people Israel. You shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you will save them from the hand of their enemies all around. Now this shall be the sign to you, that the Lord has anointed you ruler over his heritage. Here in the reading. Let us turn to Canticle 12, Song of Creation, found on page 88 of the prayer book. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him, highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord, O heavens and all waters above the heavens. Sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew. All winds and fire and heat, winter and summer glorify the lord praise him and highly exalt him forever glorify the lord of chill and cold drops of dew and lakes of snow frost and cold ice and sleet glorify the lord praise him and highly exalt him forever glorify the lord O nights and days O shining light and enfolding dark storm clouds and thunderbolts glorify the lord Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills and all that goes upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters, all birds of the air. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild and all you flocks and herds, O men and women everywhere. Glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous, Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, 
glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Second reading this morning is from the seventh chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the high priest and the council, Now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in the flame of a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight, and as he approached to look, there came the voice of the Lord, I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses began to tremble and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the mistreatment of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their groaning, and I have come down to rescue them. Come now, I will send you to Egypt. It was this Moses whom they rejected when they said, Who made you a ruler and a judge? And whom God now sent as both ruler and liberator through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out, having performed wonders and signs in Egypt, at the Red Sea, and in the wilderness for 40 years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up a prophet for you from your own people as he raised me up. He is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our ancestors, and he received living oracles to give to us. Our ancestors were unwilling to obey him. Instead, they pushed him aside, and in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make gods for us who will lead it. Make gods for us who will lead the way for us. As for this Moses, who led us out from the land of Egypt. We do not know what has happened to him. At that time, they made a calf, offered a sacrifice to the idol, and reveled in the works of their hands. But God turned away from them and handed them over to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, did you offer to me slain victims and sacrifices 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? No, you took along the tent of Moloch and the star of your God Repham, the images that you made to worship. So I will remove you from the I will remove you beyond Babylon. Here ends the read. Let us turn to Canticle 19, found on page 94 of the prayer book. Canticle 19, Song of the Dean. O ruler of the universe, Lord God. Great deeds are they that you've done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's turn to page 94, the Apostles' Creed, page 95, the Lord's Prayer. Let us say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived with the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of our Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Liberating God, we thank you for the steadfast courage of your servant, Polly Murph, who fought long and well. Unshackle us from the chains of prejudice and fear, so that we may show forth your reconciling love and true freedom, which you revealed through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we turn to the prayers uh, from the Church of the Atonement here in Chicago and the wider church that we have been praying during this week beginning on Sunday, June 25th. At this time, we also uh, offer you the opportunity to offer your own prayers silently in your heart, aloud at home, or if you would like in the comment section of this broadcast, and I will do my best to um, read those prayers um, as we approach the end of, the, of these prayers. We pray for the healing and comfort for the following, for those living in illness, Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B, Jerry C, Brad, Phyllis, Mary, Killian, Rita, Dennis, Maureen, Michael, Priest, Mary, Tom R, Ed, Thomas, Priest, Susan T, Former President Carter, Dan, Priest, Mary, Barbara, Michael, Michael, Presiding Priest, uh, Bishop, John, Manny, Chris, Elvira, Nancy, Jeff, Michael N., and all with COVID-19. We pray for those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, for all who mourn, for all victims of gun violence, for those who are traveling, for the unemployed and for those seeking work, for peace throughout the world and especially for the people of Ukraine, Sudan, Ethiopia, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, and for the work here in Chicago of Care for Friends and Care for Real. During this Pride Month, we pray Continue to pray for all the LGBTQI plus people. May it be a time of celebration and joy. And we also pray for a growth in understanding and respect among all people and for an end to insult, contempt, intolerance, hatred, and violence. We pray for all healthcare workers, 
especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents and for all prisoners, especially Oscar Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. We pray for members of our military services on active duty, Andre, Ricky, Owen, Max, Celeste, and me. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Dan, our interim rector, Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry and search committee. We pray in thanksgiving for the birthdays this week of Mother Kate Gustelis, Daniel Burke, Jeff Eng, Margaret Mui, Ryan Mather, Allison Tribble, and today, Eddie Schwartz. We pray in thanksgiving for the wedding anniversaries of Mother Erica Takis and Daniel Shapiro, Jason and Andrea Chalice, Conrad and Charlene Reynolds. And we pray in thanksgiving for the priestly ordination anniversaries of Mother Erica Takis and Father Thomas Hurd, and for the diaconal ordination anniversary of Father James M. Rosenthal. We pray for the departed, Alan Alda, Julian Sands, James Crown, nearly 80 migrants who died in the boat, cap uh, the boat capsized in Greece, for those who died in the implosion of the Titan submersible, all who have died of gun violence, all who have died of COVID-19. And at the anniversaries of their deaths, we remember and pay, play, uh, pray for Bill Brogdon, Jennifer Sutton, Dustin Post, Phyllis Smith, Jean Zuckerman, Lydia Cutts, Chuck Powers, Larry Eugene Lee, Ronnie Don Williams, Marge Smith. Let's turn to the prayers that you offer today. Bring them up here. We pray for healing for John Devine and healing for Babs Gresco. And a prayer for the people of Ukraine. This comes to us from St. Matthew in Westminster. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of fear and danger. Grant that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let's turn to the general thanksgiving to found on page 101 of the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that concludes morning prayer uh, for this morning, this fourth Saturday after Pentecost. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for praying with us today. We hope you can join us every morning here on 
um, Google Meet for morning prayer. Today, um, if you are in Chicago, uh, you are welcome at the Church of the Atonement in person at 9.30 for the Holy Rosary, 10 o'clock for the Healing Mass, and tomorrow the Sunday services as usual at 8, 9, and 11 a.m., the 11 a.m. live on YouTube. On this Saturday, may you walk in peace and know the abundance of God's blessing upon you.